Today I'm going to share with you 5 very common mistakes that are probably hurting your KD and holding you back from improving in PvP. In order to demonstrate just how impactful these things are, I performed a little experiment at the start of this season. I really focused on totally avoiding these 5 mistakes as much as possible, and after my first 1030 kills, I was at a 9.21 seasonal efficiency. Now, I'm not going to lie to you and say that this video will magically turn you into a PvP legend, but I can guarantee that cutting these mistakes out of your Crucible games will help you improve your KD and simply become a better PvP player. This video is all about refining your playstyle that you already have so that you can survive longer, get more kills, and overall have more successful and enjoyable PvP sessions. Let's jump in, and if you learn something at any time throughout the video, please hit the like button to help support the channel. At the most basic level, there are two parts of your KD, those being your kills and your deaths. Some parts of this video are focused on getting more kills and other parts are focused on reducing your deaths, so be sure to stick around for the entire video so that you can see the most benefit. At the end of the day, I do feel like it's a lot easier to reduce your deaths than to increase your kills, so let's start out with a mistake that causes a ton of unnecessary deaths. Probably the most common mistake that I see people making in Crucible is taking engagements from very disadvantageous or weak positions. Cover is your best friend. Especially when you're using a primary or a sniper, you should start almost every single engagement right next to cover. A huge mistake that I see new players making is just following the red on the radar and haphazardly engaging opponents whenever and wherever they present themselves. When you see red on the radar, you should get near to cover as fast as possible and definitely not sprint around the corner in some desperate attempt to shoulder charge your opponent. You should make the conscious decision to take engagements from a location that is safe so you'll be able to survive much, much longer, and of course, doing this will also make you win a higher percentage of your gunfights. It's in your best interest to fight adjacent to cover because that way, when something inevitably goes wrong, you have a much higher chance of being able to escape. On the other hand, if you play out in the open all the time, you'll be unable to escape from team shots, supers, and all the other OP things in this game, and that will just tank your KD. Let me show you what I mean with an actual in-game example. I want you to take a look at my positioning and the positioning of my opponent, Tony, over there. If we are equally skilled hand cannon users, who do you think has the advantage in this engagement? This is actually a great example, particularly for hand cannons, because they are excellent peak shooting weapons. Hand cannons do a large amount of damage with a single shot, so the best possible way for me to approach this engagement is to stay and cover the majority of the time and only come out to take my shot. That way, I decrease the amount of time that my opponent can see me, and hopefully this also decreases the amount of damage that he can do to me. This will probably lead to me landing more shots than my opponent, and I'll defeat him since he's out in the open and he can't get to cover. But let's consider the possibility that I miss my shots, and my opponent is winning the gunfight. All I have to do is simply turn around and disengage and there's no way that he'll be able to catch up to me. I can regenerate my health and find another angle to take up. I like to think of this tip as forcing your opponents to play on your terms so that you control the engagement. When you're the one in cover, you get to control when the gunfight starts and when it ends, and that power gives you a massive advantage that you can use in order to come out on top as much as possible. Resist that temptation to go out in the open and play right into your opponent's hand and instead force him to take a gunfight on your terms. This can take a bit of patience, and it may also translate to a slightly slower playstyle, but at the end of the day, you'll be a far better overall player. Correcting this first mistake really boils down to asking yourself two questions. Am I taking this engagement from a position where I have the upper hand, and if I'm outnumbered, can I escape? Ideally, you want the answer to both of these questions to be yes at all times. If you think back to your most recent gaming session and remember fighting from random positions like our friend Tony, try to remember to fight next to cover next time you hop into the Crucible. As you continue to get more experience, you'll get better and better at recognizing what good situations look like, and you'll be able to capitalize on them more often. Let's move on to mistake number two. This one is all about the numbers game. With the exception of Rumble, Destiny PvP is strongly team-based, and the players who know how to work with their teammates and divide up their opponents will win almost every engagement. Less experienced players, and sometimes also experienced players with an ego, make the mistake of just running around by themselves and expecting to win when they encounter a whole firing squad of six opponents. Like, have you ever approached an open area of the map and then just instantly died by four guys shooting you all at once? Well, of course you have, it happens to everyone. What matters is that you learn from the experience and try to avoid similar situations in the future. If you're alone and you see more than one person looking at you, just dip. Just leave. Like your chance of outgunning 2-6 to six people at the same time is very very low even if you're the best player in the world. 
You'll rarely be able to outplay two people who are team shooting you, so please, just disengage and maybe find your teammates or relocate to a place where you can engage your opponents one at a time. Another thing to consider is your teammates. Like especially in 6v6, your teammates are the most powerful resource you have to get free kills and assists. Like it sounds kind of simple, but if you team shoot with a teammate in front of you, your opponents will likely shoot your teammate instead of you, leaving you completely open to just annihilate them while they're distracted. Your teammate will probably also chip in some damage himself, which just makes your job even easier. In 6v6, you can kind of bait your teammates to protect yourself, but if you care about winning, and especially in something like Trials, you'll want to team shoot with them as much as possible. Check this out, I feel like this is a super underrated use of the radar. Your allies show up as little dots so that you can know precisely where they are without even seeing them, and if your allies die, they create an X on the radar. I feel like newer players don't pay enough attention to this. Like your radar is a massively important tool, not just for keeping track of your opponents, but also your teammates. Sticking nearby to your allies and helping them win their gunfights will also help you. And at the end of the day, if your opponents are shooting at your teammates sometimes instead of you, that means you'll drastically reduce the amount of deaths that you take. A word of warning though, don't go right on top of your teammates. In Destiny 2, grenades, supers, and abilities are a large portion of the game, so if you're stacked directly on top of your teammates, this is almost encouraging your opponents to use those powerful AoE abilities and supers. Instead of doing this, you'll want to use your radar to make sure you're near those little dots, just not right on top of them. A distance like this is appropriate for most situations. A great way to recognize and ultimately correct gameplay mistakes is to get feedback from another player who may be a tad more experienced. My community discord has a channel dedicated to doing just that, so be sure to join if you haven't already. The link is in the description. Mistake number three is about getting greedy with your kills by chasing weakened opponents too much, or perhaps too little. This is a super common one that comes up every single game and it pains me to see people make this mistake time and time again. We've all been in this situation. You've damaged your opponent and you want nothing more than to rush in and finish him off. You've got him so low that a sneeze in his general direction would be enough to eliminate him. But it's not always the right decision to chase after him. The things that I'm about to mention might seem like a lot, but bear with me, I promise it's not too bad. Before you rush in and finish off a weakened opponent, there are a few very important things to consider. First of all, take a look at your radar. If you can see that there are a lot of opponents, it's just not worth chasing. If the segments on the top of your radar are illuminated, that indicates multiple opponents, and 9 times out of 10, running in after that single kill will just get you killed by a team shot. Again, another thing to notice on your radar is your teammates. If you've got two teammates right next to you and they decide to push in together, your chances of success are astronomically higher. After checking your radar, the next thing to do is glance at your health level and compare it to that of your opponent. If you're at full health and your opponent has 1 HP remaining, well, that's a good sign. But if you guys have about the same health, pushing is often not a good idea. If you decide to sprint after him, this will often give him the upper hand because he can turn around and blast you while you're trying to catch up. The last thing you should consider before chasing is the loadouts involved on both sides. If your opponent has a shotgun and you have a sniper, pushing can often be a really bad idea because he's just going to wait for you around the corner and easily blast you when you try to approach. On the other hand, if he's using a sniper and you've got a shotgun, that means that you've likely got the upper hand in a close quarters chase. Before we get into the next big mistake, here's a kind of special bonus tip. If you're pushing after a good player who is weak, he will often try to float above a doorway with a shotgun, so be ready to look up to take him out. And of course, if you're the one who is running, I'll tell you this right now, using your vertical space like this will get you so many free gills on over-aggressive opponents. Now that I've said all of this though, you've got to remember that especially in Elimination, Survival, and Trials of Osiris, your life is much more important than the kill. If you think you've got a 50-50 chance of beating your opponent, just don't engage. It's much better to take up a new position where you have a better chance of success. If you're liking this video so far, be sure to subscribe because I'll be making more videos like this very soon, and if this video does well, I'll even consider turning this into a series. Mistake number 4 is using your super wrong. Your super is a very powerful tool in your arsenal, and using it unnecessarily or incorrectly leaves so much on the table. When newer players cast their roaming supers, they often feel a lot of pressure to get a ton of kills in order to not waste their super. I know I used to feel this way, and ultimately it caused me to die a lot more than it should've. It took me a while to realize that casting my super and getting zero kills was infinitely better than casting my super and dying because I overextended. That is the ultimate waste of a super. Instead, don't be afraid to regenerate your health and rotate around the map when in a roaming super. Most of the roaming supers in this game last for quite a while. 
If you're on Spectral Blades, for example, don't try to rush in alone against three people who are sitting in the back of the spawn hardscoping their snipers. You're just inviting them to get a free kill on you. Making a coordinated push with your teammate will have a much better chance of success. I also want to take a moment to discuss the infamous solo super. For anyone who is unaware, this refers to the use of a super to eliminate only one guardian. Despite what you may hear, doing a solo super can sometimes be a great play. For example, if you're in a situation where you're almost certainly going to die, but using your super allows you to survive, then that's a good decision to make. As long as you're reasonably sure that the solo super will allow you to get out of there alive, go for it. This can mean using your super to shut down an opposing super, and honestly that's a great idea. However, it is ideal to defeat more than one opponent with each super. If you notice that your opponents have a tendency to group up in a certain location, that is a fantastic way to secure two or more kills. To sum this up, getting more than one kill with your super is fantastic, but not if it costs you your life. Remember not to overextend. Mistake number five is refusing to adapt. Now this one takes a little bit more critical thinking than the other tips in this video, but I firmly believe that everyone can adapt, and once you get better at it, you'll improve rapidly. And no, before someone in the comments just absolutely pops off and rages about how it's impossible to adapt to stasis, that's not what I'm talking about here. The adaptation that I'm talking about can happen within a single game or over time due to a meta shift. Allow me to explain. When a game isn't going your way, it's easy to get frustrated and just keep doing the same thing over and over until you inevitably lose. While it is possible that your opponent is simply 10 times better than you, 90% of the time the reality is that your opponent's strategy is a natural counter to your strategy in one way or another. So instead of blaming the meta, if you can adapt your playstyle, you can often make a comeback or at least get some good kills on your opponent. Here's an example. If you're in 6v6 and you just get completely ran over by the entire enemy team using shotguns, you can adapt by constantly keeping more distance between you and your opponent. The funny thing is, you'll probably notice that the people who only use their shotgun aren't the best when it comes to primary gunfights. So instead of falling victim to the apes, force them to use their primary by creating a little distance and sticking by your teammates. Here's another situation that I see all the time. In the first round of a trials game, I lock down this main lane and my opponents slowly peek and die to my sniper. And then in the next round, they do the same thing, five rounds in a row until they lose. At any time throughout the game, if they had chosen to group up and flank from a different angle or perhaps try to pick off my teammates, their chances of winning would have skyrocketed. Long story short, if something isn't working, please consider trying something else. However, this doesn't mean switch your weapons every single round. That's another mistake I often see people making. They switch their weapons like 10 times a game and ultimately that leads to them being pretty bad at using all of them instead of pretty good at using a few of them. If you recognize yourself making some or all of the mistakes in this video, what I recommend is spending three games focusing on eliminating each mistake. Focus on staying out of exposed areas for three games, and then focus on watching your radar to avoid being a lone wolf. By focusing on one thing at a time, you'll be giving yourself the best possible chance to learn and solidify good habits and break bad ones. Eventually, you'll be able to put everything together, and that's when the most significant and noticeable improvement occurs. Speaking of improvement, if you'd like to learn how to become a more effective sniper, be sure to check out my comprehensive sniping guide from last month. It's the top video on your screen now.